Hi, I'm Colin West, and this is Poker Science. So today, I want to talk about one of the scariest and most uncomfortable places you can find yourself. No, not Walmart at 2 in the morning. I'm talking about the bubble. That all-important moment in a tournament that makes the difference between going home a bust or getting to say that you cashed. Bubbles arise because in a tournament, your goal actually isn't to win chips. It's to win prizes. Now, your strategy to win prizes probably involves trying to win as many chips as possible. If you know a guy whose tournament strategy involves minimizing his chip stack, get him help. But the point is, chips themselves are not your overall goal. So instead of focusing on chips, we often analyze tournament gameplay by focusing on a player's prize equity. That is to say, the share of the prize pool that you are expected to win on average. At the moment, the most popular mathematical method for estimating a player's prize equity is called the Independent Chip Model, or ICM for short. The ICM's calculations are all based on stack sizes. If you're the chip leader, you've probably got a lot of prize equity. The short stacks? Not so much. There's a lot more that could be said about the ICM in terms of its strengths and weaknesses compared to its competitors, and we may well say those things on a future episode of this show. But in real life, ICM has shown to be quite predictive of actual outcomes in WPT final tables. It's a good enough approximation and an estimator of prize equity for our purposes, analyzing the effects of a tournament bubble. So now let's look at a specific example to make this clear. Suppose that you're playing in a sit-and-go tournament where the top three places pay out. A typical prize structure for an event like this might be 100 for first place, 60 for second, and 40 for third. Now suppose you make it down to the last four. That's the bubble for a tournament like this. And imagine it's a really close game. Everyone has roughly 10,000 chips, and the blinds are at 500, 1,000. Let's say you find yourself in the big blind when the small blind shoves on you. So there's 11,000 in the pot, and you have to pay 9,000 in order to try to win it. If this were a cash game, the calculation in your head should go something like this. I have to call 9,000 in order to try to win 11,000, so my pot odds are 9,000 divided by 9,000 plus 11,000, which is 45%. If I think I'm at least a 45% favorite to win, I should call. Notice. I could comfortably call even if I knew this was going to be a total coin flip, because a 50% chance to win is enough to satisfy the 45% pot odds. But if you're thinking you just wouldn't have the guts to call it all off here with ace-king versus jacks, then I've got good news for you. The math says you're not actually a coward. Well, that's not true. I wouldn't have any way of knowing if you're a coward. I'm a YouTube video and I haven't met you. But coward or not, you could use the math to justify your skepticism here. Remember, you're not just trying to maximize the number of chips that you have, you're trying to win prizes. So we shouldn't be just comparing the number of chips that you have to the chips that you can win. We should be comparing the equity that you risk to the equity that you could gain. In our situation, the ICM says you're starting with a prize equity of about $47. That's how much you can expect to win, on average, given your stack size. If you win the hand, of course your prize equity rises. But the ICM says it only rises by about $30. You're risking $47 worth of equity to win $30 more. In other words, you should only call if you think you can win 61% of the time or more. All of a sudden, a coin flip here becomes a losing proposition. So the bubble is real. There's a real mathematical reason to play tighter on the bubble of a tournament than you would with the same cards in a cash game. And the bigger the pay jumps and the bigger the bets that you're facing, the more the odds will skew against you away from the normal pot odds. But as always, I want to end with a caveat. Yes, in a generic situation, you should tighten up before the bubble relative to your cash play. But in reality, many players tighten up far too much. I don't blame them. It feels good psychologically to cash, even if it's not for very much. But you've got to think about the percentages here. Unless you're really certain that the magic words, at least I cashed, mean more to you than your long-term winnings, then you shouldn't let yourself fall into this trap. On the contrary, when the bubble hits, you should be looking for these players who want to cash more than they want to win, and then playing exploitatively against them, because they're folding too often. So don't play too loose, but don't play too tight. The whole thing requires a careful balance, and the only way to know if you're doing it right is to look at your long-term results. If you're busting on a lot of bubbles and also mostly recording min caches, then you're probably playing too loose and being eliminated earlier than you should be. But if you're busting a lot of bubbles and recording enough deep runs to make up for it, then you found the exploitative sweet spot. 
So long story short, believe in the bubble, because tournaments really are different from cash games in mathematically quantifiable ways. But don't let your emotions take that idea too far. Because here's the thing, and I hate to burst your bubble, your emotions aren't that good at poker. You gotta keep them in check.